What's going on, everybody? This is Max the Catfish, and today my mind was freaking blown. I thought when I posted my top 20 tips for Satisfactory that I knew them all, and you guys definitely proved me wrong down in the comments. This tip blew my freaking mind, and it's going to change how I play the game. There is a calculator inside of Satisfactory. Yes, in the game. No mods, no nothing. It is there at your fingertips if you press the N key. Now, pressing N brings up this little bar called the Fix It Quick Search. And at its most basic functionality, what you can do is type in a word like, I don't know, coal. And you can automatically either build a coal generator, it, it selects the building for you to build, or if it's for a recipe, it brings you to the recipe list and you can see that recipe in your recipe list. Now that's its basic functionality but it also doubles as a calculator and can perform all of the basic calculator functions that you could use in a calculator outside of the game. So you get your addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You can also use parentheses for, uh, you know, making some more complicated equations. And you should do this because the order of operations in this calculator is a little bit wonky. I recommend you surround your equations with parentheses in the appropriate ways to make your equations actually give you the value that you would expect. And you also have some other functionality. So you can do exponents in this calculator, if you use the little caret over your six key, uh, you can perform exponents and you technically can perform square roots. If you do the exponent to a fraction, you can get the square root. So doing 10 to the one half exponent is going to give you the square root of 10, for instance. And I'll be honest, if you guys get creative with this, you might be able to use square roots in this game. I don't know any reason you would ever need to use exponents and square roots in Satisfactory, but you can do so. And there's one last functionality that you can actually perform in the calculator. And this is something, if you're familiar with programming, you've probably seen this, and that's called the modulo or the mod of a number. And what that's giving you is the remainder of a division. So for instance, if we do the modulo of 15 divided by four, you are going to get the remainder of that equation. And that is going to give you some really cool usages inside of the game. So you've got a calculator. I'm gonna show you how you can use this calculator to plan out your next base. There's actually some really easy, simple calculations that you can run that use each one of these operators in order to plan out your base. And I'm going to show you how to use this to the best of its effectiveness in your next game of Satisfactory or your game that you're running currently. Let's get into it. All right, so the first usage that you can use for this calculator is probably the one that you will use the most. And I think that this is one of the best usages of the calculator. It's a really quick, easy equation that you can set up to know how much space you need for your base. So if you've got a base with a bunch of nodes scattered around and miners on top of those nodes, you can very quickly understand how much resource you are going to get out of each one of those nodes. So if you go up to any of the nodes in the game, the resource nodes in the game, all of the nodes in the game are divided into impure, normal, or a pure node. And that determines how much resource you can get out of that node in totality. And when you place down a miner on top of that node, you can get a sense of how much resource that miner is able to dig up. So here we've got a Mark I miner on top of a pure node, and it is able to produce 120 iron ore per minute. Now, we haven't overclocked this miner. At the bottom here, you can see the overclocking section. And if we put in some power shards, which you get from those slugs around the world, you can actually increase this up to 250% of its current rate. So you can get a total of 300 iron ore a minute out of this miner. And that's only a Mark I. At Mark III, this miner can produce a total of 780 resources per minute. It's a ton. And what you can do is with your calculator in hand, you can perform a function that lets you know how many smelters you need for each one of your miners. So right now, we don't need many smelters at all. Actually, I think the, the number is, if we run the numbers here, 120 divided by 30, we only need four smelters. But in the future, we are going to have 780 resources coming out of this node. So if we do the calculation, 780 divided by the number of iron ore that each smelter takes per minute, that is 26 smelters. I need to plan to build 26 smelters for every pure node of iron 
inside of my base. And so this gives me a really good sense of how much space I need to allocate for these smelters. That is just a really quick calculation that you can run for each one of the nodes around the world. Now, I've put up this chart here that lets you know how much iron ore, or, or in general, each one of your nodes is going to be able to provide you based on its purity. So an impure node can give you at maximum 300 iron ore, a normal node at maximum can give you 600 iron ore, and a pure node at the absolute limit can give you 780 iron ore, and that's because the Mark V belts can only actually transport 780 resources per minute. So if you have a impure node, all you do is 300 divided by 30, boom, you know you need to make 10 smelters for that node and you should give yourself the space to do so. Don't forget, you can add those buildings to your to-do list. If you go and press X and go into the recipes panel, type in smelters, and if you click on this, you can actually add these to your to-do list and increase it like this. Or the alternate way of doing this is by pressing Q and going to your production pane and adding these smelters to your to-do list. You can actually edit this number by selecting it and typing in any number that you want. So if we need our 26 smelters, we can press 26 here. And then what we get on the right side of our screen is a little wish list or a to-do list of all of the resources we need to collect to be able to build those smelters. All right, so the second way that a calculator in the game can come in handy is when you want to get to a target production rate and you need to know how much input you have to provide for that process. So for instance, if I say I want to make 150 iron plates per minute, I have to ask myself very importantly, how much iron ore do I need, right? to be able to get to that level. And I've got to calculate and figure out what that number is. And you can do this with a relatively simple calculation. So first of all, if we take a look at our constructor, we can see that we can make 20 iron plates per minute, but it costs 30 iron ingots per minute, okay? So if we pull up our calculator here and we plug in our target rate of 150 iron plates and every constructor constructs 20 iron plates per minute, we can see that we need to build 7.5 constructors. Now, of course, you can't build half of a constructor. You have to build out and round this number up. So we would build a total of eight constructors, but that doesn't tell us how much iron ore we need to build 150, right? So in order to do this, one of the easiest ways that I recommend is you pull up your recipes list and you go in here and you find the iron plate recipe. Now, this recipe is giving us some information that the constructor has told us and some information that we didn't know previously. It tells us that every constructor can construct 20 iron plates per minute. And for every two iron plates that we craft, we have to feed the constructor three iron ingots. So three iron ingots turn into two iron plates. And we want to know how much iron do we have to feed this process? Well, pull up your calculator and let's start with our target production rate of 150 iron plates per minute. We know that every single time we produce an iron plate, we produce two iron plates and every two iron plates costs us three ingots. So multiply this by three. This gives us the number of iron ore or the number of iron ingots. Remember that those two are equal. It's a one-to-one -one value that we have to provide this process. So we have to provide at least 225 iron ore in order to produce 150 iron ingots. It is that simple. Now, of course, you could simplify this calculation down a little bit further. So actually, uh, what this really is, is a calculation of for every three iron ingots, we produce two iron plates. That means that an iron plate costs 1.5 iron ingots. So we technically could have done a calculation which looks like 150 times 1.5. And that gives us the number of iron ingots and iron ore that we would need. But if you don't already know the numbers, the equation breaks down to the number of your target production, divide that by the number that you produce every single time a constructor produces a good multiplied by the input rate. And that is going to get you the rate that you need to provide input for an entire process. All right, so here we are. I have set this up with our eight smelters and our eight constructors, which we calculated in the last step. But 
Remember, when we calculated our number of how many constructors we needed, we got the number 7.5. That was not a round number. We decided to round up. And that means we are going to be overproducing some of these iron plates. And you can use the calculator to calculate exactly how much your overproduction will be by bringing up the calculator and using the mod function. Remember, I was talking about the remainder at the beginning of the video. That's what this function is able to do. It is able to tell you how much waste or how much overage you might have in one of your processes. So for instance, we said that we needed 225 iron ore in order to feed our eight constructors, right? 225 iron ore, and we've got eight constructors. Now, if we divide that by 30, we get our 7.5 number. But remember, we're feeding a little bit more than that. We wanna know how much of this ore is left over. If you use the mod function, that is the percentage sign to do so, and perform the same equation that you did as a division, what that number represents, the number 15, is that you are using 15 more iron ore than your original target number for plates. So for instance, had you had a perfect equilibrium here, this number would be zero, but because you need 225 iron ore, to perform your plates of 150 plates per minute, you are quote unquote wasting 15 iron ore. Or alternatively, what you can do is you can say, we have a target rate of 150 iron plates, and we know that each one of our constructors constructs 20 iron plates per minute. And so if we enter in that number, what we are getting is how much overage are we producing with, with our eight constructors. We are overproducing by 10 iron plates. Now, quick tip for those of you that really want perfect numbers. If you must have this process construct 150 iron plates and not one plate more, you are able to do so by going to one of your constructors and underclocking it. So we know that we have an overage of 10 iron plates too many. What you can do, if you really want to, is you can go down to this target production rate and you can set this to 10 per minute. And now what we have is a setup here that perfectly produces exactly 150 iron plates per minute. And you were able to get that number by using the calculator in the game. This modulo function really does come in handy if you want these perfectly efficient, 100% efficiency builds. The calculator really comes in handy. That was a quick guide to the calculator in Satisfactory. This thing is freaking awesome. It is right there. All you gotta do is press the N key. This in combination with some of the search functionality in the game really helps setting up some of these factories really quick and easy. You can get to recipes really quickly and start calculating out some of your calculations that you need for the game. If this was helpful, drop a like. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Also, if you come up with any reason why you might need to use exponents or square roots in your calculator in Satisfactory, let me know. I am itching to know how you might use those functions. But otherwise, let me know how you plan to use the calculator in your factories in Satisfactory, and I will catch you in our next tips and tricks video. See you guys soon.